get started. <laughs> yeah, we do have an hour. I can go one and a half hours, uh, and then that's and then that's it because we have a someone after us. I think. Um, so I am going to share my screen. Uh, we do have. Okay, let me let me make sure that I have uh, my chat up because I'm very worried about missing stuff when when I do something wrong, essentially. So. I have a little slide deck. It's not like going to be a whole talk because I want you guys to talk. Um, and uh, and this is a group therapy session. I don't know, <laughs> rather than like a um, teaching session. Um, okay, so uh, I should probably. I originally had like this question here. Uh, I think I'm just going to move it towards the the end um, because. I don't think that, um, I think I should start off with a little bit of intro for people who don't know who I am. Um, okay, yes, uh, Slobodan, love the Mondrian theme, yes. Uh, you can actually get this off of Slides Mania on the, on the left, uh, it's, it's a free theme. And one of my <laughs> hot tips as a presenter, as, as a speaker is never use the Google, the default Google themes because there's a whole industry of free themes out there and you can probably use one of those if you just give some attribution and they just look great. Okay, so we're here for BASB week one uh, capture um, and uh, I'm Sean, also known as Swix um, and I was part of cohort 10 and I'm back again to try to go through the new content. Uh, I know that Tiago has re-recorded a bunch of this stuff. Uh, some of the content has changed and also just meet people. Uh, I think that when uh, you know something best when you teach it. So I do encourage you, you know, as you go through this journey to try to teach it to your friends or family members and you retain it much better as well. Um, so that's part of what I, what, why I'm here. Um, okay, a little bit of self intro and then, and then we'll go into the specifics. Uh, I'm gonna basically try to recap the, the stuff that we covered this week and then try to get some feedback from you <clears throat> and get you talking amongst yourself on some of the questions that were raised this week. Uh, so, hey, I'm Swix. Uh, I blog at Swix.io. Um, I am a developer, uh, I'm finance guy turned developer. <laughs> that's a long story I just compressed there. Um, we used to work at Netlify AWS, uh, that's Amazon Web Services for the non-technical people. Um, and now I currently, I'm currently head of developer experience at temporal.io. Um, I help to run the React to TypeScript cheat sheet, which is one of the ways in which I build a second brain, uh, which is very specific for developers. Uh, probably a bunch of you here are developers. I see Glenn is using reveal.js. Um, and uh, I also wrote the coding career handbook as my capstone for uh, building a second brain last year. So uh, part of the reason why this is a Notion advanced course, even though I'm like not a huge Notion expert, uh, is because I, I do, we, we are very focused on trying to get people to produce output. Uh, so not just getting comfortable with the, the habits, um, but also producing uh, like blogging, speaking and writing and hopefully making money. Um, I'm very keen on helping people to make money with their second brains. Okay, so uh, I'm from Singapore. Uh, these are the pictures that I, I tweeted this once, uh, basically saying Singapore is the Wakanda of Asia. Uh, it's not usually so super overexposed like this. <laughs> so don't come here and be super disappointed. Uh, but it does look pretty great. Uh, it, it does have a lot of um, man-made slash nature blended with it. Um, and it is home for me. So uh, happy to answer any questions about Singapore. Um, all right. <clears throat> So here's a here's a brief history of my blogging. Um, this is me in 2016. Nobody knows about this. Even I I, I never I never talk about this. Uh, this is me on Medium, uh, writing, trying to get into the whole content creation game, uh, and not really having much results. So this is like you know this my, my sort of attempt at thought leadership and not really and just engaging with stuff that uh, I thought was interesting. You know I was I was very into voice user interfaces because uh, we I coded. Um, and Alexa skill. And at the time, Alexa was going to be this huge thing that's going to take over the planet. Um, yeah, and then just kept blogging and then just like kind of fell off. And I think a lot of a lot of people here probably have um, some experience of this where like you tried to get started, didn't go anywhere, and then you just stopped. Um, and I think it's very authentic and original. Um, and I'm, I'm here to say that I'm one of you, you know, I, I, I've definitely been there. Um, the, the first real hit was when 
because I, I started reading and listening to Ben Thompson, got a bit lost in Ben Thompson's um, universe and so decided to make a map. And so I, I applied some of my data analysis skills. <clears throat> oh, hey, Amit, yeah, I see, I see you're, uh, you work at Alexa, so I should probably shouldn't talk down too much about Alexa. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Um, okay, so, uh, but yeah, this is, this is my first hit <clears throat> because it focused on a person and, and a prominent person at that, and it solves a problem for myself that other people had. Uh, and that was my first real breakthrough. Like all these previous ideas, um, sorry, let me try and go back. All these previous ideas were just things I had in my head that nobody cared about. Um, and then when you focus on a, such a small specific topic as one person and such a small specific question as how do you rank things, um, you perform a service that other people uh, are interested in because I, was, I also had that same problem. Um, so I think that was a, 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 the beginning of my journey as to like, how do I productionize this second brain or, or like writing system uh, towards building a network, towards building a reputation for myself and, and just making things that people wanna read. Um, okay, so I will keep going. Um, so since then, um, I, I have become a reasonable React uh, TypeScript JavaScript developer, happy to talk about tech stuff after the one hour, because <laughs> we, we try to keep this general and inclusive. Um, but this has probably been one of my major projects, which is essentially um, running the community documentation for React and TypeScript developers. Um, I teach a thousand people a day React and TypeScript off of this thing. Um, and it is literally my second brain of how to React and TypeScript. Uh, and people from Uber, Microsoft, Airbnb, you name it, they, they've all contributed and taught me stuff as, as I have taught them. So uh, it's just really great when you start to do uh, a, you know, these advanced forms of second braining. Uh, I call this open source knowledge in the way that people can give back. So second brain is, is often very one way. Um, and when you can open source your knowledge, um, it can be very powerful. So happy to talk about that as well. But I'm just giving you a brief overview of like what I do. Um, I also have been focusing a lot on marketing, right? Every time you do something, you should also tell people that you've done it. Uh, otherwise, does it really exist? So um, I, I think, you know, framing it in things, in, in ways in which uh, people understand and then tagging people who have, that, have the exact pain point um, really starts to accelerate your growth uh, by some, as someone who learns in public. Okay, uh, you know what? I didn't talk about the learning policy in my slides. Anyway, um, I also have been getting pretty steadily <coughs> into the personal blogging. Um, this is me getting serious last year in January and then um, going from like 20,000 uniques to 35,000 and now 40-ish. Uh, this is uh, April, um, but with occasional really big spikes. I think um, something, you, something everyone should understand about blogging is that uh, it's a very hits-driven business and you put out your, <laughs> it's, it's a very common phenomenon to um, put out all your effort into something and then have it fall completely flat and then spend like, you know, two hours on a rant and then just see that go viral. Um, the effort is completely disconnected with the results and you should be okay with that because ultimately you're working through something. You're, you're trying to log something for yourself um, and it's, a, it's always a side benefit or side effect if other people feel the same way too. Um, I do definitely preach the idea of having a second brain, a public second brain as um, something that is a single player game that can optionally become multiplayer. But if you start off only evaluating it as a multiplayer game that where nobody plays with you, then uh, you're likely to not continue playing that game. Okay. Um, uh, and then finally, I also started writing for money, right? So I, uh, as part of my um, BSB cohort 10 capstone, I decided to write a book. Um, I launched it after BSB ended. Um, I gave myself two weeks, it, it took uh, two months to write. <laughs> Um, and then it started making money. <coughs> first month, I think it, uh, oh, first day, it, it made 20, uh, by launch day, because I, I, did, I did some pre-sales, it made 25K. Uh, after about a couple months, um, it got to 50K. I crossed 100K a few time, a few months ago. Um, and and uh, now it's, it's still going, and I'm still doing a fair amount of marketing on that. So if anyone here is interested in writing a book and self-publishing, um, this is the place for you as well. Okay. 
Uh, finally, the, the, my new project this year has been audio notes, um, which is, I think, a pain point of a lot of people going through BASB. Um, they're like, I listen to a lot of podcasts and there are no good tools to do podcasting notes. Um, I am not here to say that I have the right answer, but I have a answer and I'm trying to make it work. Um, it is a personal podcast where I clip selections and share it with friends and publish it. And sometimes it gets picked up by the people who are in the podcast. And uh, that is a very rewarding way to do audio notes as well. So happy to talk about that. Okay, great. Um, so a couple of ground rules here. Um, so I don't like this idea that people say like there are no stupid questions. There obviously are. If you, <laughs> you just <laughs> talk to enough people, um, people ask really weird shit, but, um, but it's okay. It's okay to ask them here. Um, it, we are, we're all learning. Um, and sometimes if you have them on your mind, uh, other people do as well. Um, and uh, what's important is that there are no consequences and you're not judged. Um, and you really genuinely have them and that's fine. I, I have them too. Uh, rule number, I, and I obviously start at zero because we are a developer-focused mentor group. <laughs> uh, rule number one, um, I think that people do this a lot with BASB. Uh, you paid a lot for this course. Uh, Tiago is a very organized and smooth presenter, um, and you might think that you might have to do it perfect. <coughs> um, don't, because you will fail. Um, I don't do it perfect. I don't even use Notion very well, um, but try to do it often. It's more about the habit rather than uh, having like clean and you know perfectly organized notes. Um, rule number two, um, <laughs> which is the third rule, I'm not an expert here. I'm I'm just a facilitator, right? Like so, I'm just trying to um, help you in your journey. Um, I've been on this journey as well, um, and I can't speak to everything. I will say I don't know a lot, and that's okay um, because someone else here in this group might know the answer. Um, and I just here to connect with people. All right, so um, I'm just cute. I'm just, yeah, exactly, Julian. Uh, yeah, we're zero indexing here in this group. Um, okay, so uh, a little bit of a survey question. Um, I just wanna see where, where people are at. Uh, you know, we have uh, about 86, oh my God, 86 people here. Uh, why do you want to build a second brain? Let's, uh, let's see it in the chat. Let's kind of see a, see a bunch of um, Zoom chat responses. Um, <coughs> we'll do a couple of breakout sessions later as well. Uh, just based on the assignments that you've been given. But I just want to see um, why people are here. Why, why did you do this course? If you're, if you're uh, a second time person here, uh, a lot of the advanced people are second timers. Why did you do it again? Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's, see what's, let's see what's up. Okay, uh, Jose says, get peace of mind. Glenn says, to put things out there. Peter says, manage the flood of incoming information. I don't know if you can see this if I put the chat on the screen. I think you can't because, because Zoom doesn't work like that. Um, Elaine says, to sharpen the saw. That's a reference to the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, uh, T, T-H-I, says create a point of view, which is very, very good. Uh, that's something that we picked up this week on the perspective economy. Uh, John Hartquist, I want to start producing more instead of endlessly learning new and cool things. Yes, right? We are, we're, we're done with this whole like, information overload and we need to productionize ourselves. Exactly. Uh, Amity says, I have a lot of interesting projects that I never finish and never show anyone else. Um, Ian says, have something to show for explorations and rabbit holes. Um, there, there's a lot here. <coughs> uh, and, and so, I'm sorry, I couldn't read out everyone's. Um, but yeah, these are all, these are like really great lessons. Um, sometimes <coughs> I think building a second brain is very much like the, the behind the scenes process of productionizing. Um, but you build the, you, you start from abundance when you do this. Um, you start from a, a, a bank of knowledge. So when you want to productionize, um, you, can, you can really you know, pull things together very, very quickly. And that's how I blog as well and, and write stuff. Okay, all right. So uh, I'm gonna briefly recap. Um, I don't know if this is useful for people. So uh, let me know um, if like, I kind of view this as like a TAing part of the, this little mentor group, which is that let's, let's recap what we learned this week. <clears throat> so um, I really like this, this phrase, the perspective era that Tiago had, um, where he recapped what we, what we, where we came from. Like um, we used to have kind of a, a space economy uh, where we were uh, you know, trading on physical resources. And then we had a time economy, then we had an attention economy, 
Um, and now that every spare second of our attention has been gobbled up, uh, we're sort of in a perspective economy um, where the more important thing is that uh, because we're flooded with information all the time, and I love this analogy, because we're flooded, what do you, what do, you do in a flood? You seek the high ground. And, and for us, seeking the high ground is having a point of view from which uh, you can look down and, and see everything in perspective rather than being overwhelmed by all the water around us. Okay, uh, let me pause for one second because Renato, who's been helping out in the admin, <coughs> is leaving and I need to make someone, I need to make Frank. Where are you, Frank? Um, I need to make Frank a co-host. All right, Frank is a co-host. Uh, Frank is our lead uh, mentor, well, my lead mentor. So he's mentoring the mentors. Um, all right, thanks Renato for, for your help. Um, who else is a mentor? No, I think that's, I think that's it, right? <coughs> Sorry about this. I do have a little bit of a cough. Okay, Frank, uh, I, think you, I think you are a co-host. All right, I think, we're, I think we're all sorted there. Okay, um, so that's the, that's the first part, which I, I really like, um, which is a little bit of the, the why, uh, why, why a second brain, um, but that's just, that's just Tiago's perspective. And I think uh, part of the reason why I wanna hear about your perspectives is that um, we all have different approaches when we, when we come to this thing. And, and um, you know, we, ha we all have different perspectives. It's, it's a very personal point of view. Um, so I really like this quote as well. Point of view is that is that essentially human solution to information overload. In a world of hyperabundant content, point of view will be will become the scarcest of resources, uh, which is very meta because you're going to have to develop a point of view on building a second brain. Um, there is way thirty mentor sessions and like two thousands I don't know little information bits and items on the on the forums. Um, you're getting information overload here, so uh, that's why I want you to have a point of view on building a second brain as well. Okay. The other thing that we're going to cover is the 12 favorite problems. Um, this is something I like a lot as well. I covered this in my own book, um, which is the Richard Feynman quote. Um, if you already did this, then great. Um, I know that I actually did not do, do the whole exercise when, um, I, uh, when I went through BSB the first time. Um, but uh, just a reminder to, to chuck them here. This is your assignment for this week. Um, go on to building a second brain, not circle, not so, and throw in your 12 favorite problems. Um, I would say that, you know, in keeping with rule number one, which is don't try to do it perfect, do it often. Um, you don't need 12, right? Three is good. Eight's good. You know, you don't need 12. Um, but you should have some amount of problems that you revisit time and time again, and you slot information into those problems. Cool. Um, so uh, this, is a, this is a little uh, workshop session now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to break uh, y'all into working groups and you can share with each other uh, on your 12 favorite problems. We have 86 people here. So we're, we're going to try to make this, um, we're going to try to make this small. So I'm going to try to break people into uh, 10 groups. Shall we do that? Um, and then let's, uh, talk, let's talk about Let's talk about what our 12 favorite problems are and share them, all right? And then we'll, we'll meet back in about three minutes. Let's do that, all right, let's go. Um, and uh, Frank, if you're here, uh, tell me if I'm doing it right. <laughs> yeah, man, you're, you're great. <laughs> okay. Three minutes might be a little bit of a short time, people. Oh, okay. It might okay. be a little bit fast. If you have, uh, let's see how many people you got in there. Oh, okay. So yeah, for, for big groups here, you won't have enough time for three minutes. Okay. So ideally like the, the suggestion is if you could put like three to four people per group or even like less. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know how to math. <laughs> oh, yeah, no worries. Yeah, you can, you can like, if you, if you go under the, when you create the breakout room and then yeah. you click on the little icon, you could just keep on adding rooms. I think you have up to a hundred rooms you can add. Okay. Or, or up to. But yeah, right now uh, people might Wait, come can back I, into the. Can I add it now? Yeah, you can. You can move people around. Um, like if you if you hover over a person's name, you can move them to another room, like seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yeah, but I can't. I can't add a new room. No, you can't add a room. So you have four rooms that are empty right now, like seven, eight, nine, and ten. Oh, how? how uh, that? Yeah. So let me like. Um, if you take a look at under breakout rooms at the bottom, and then you look at the. 
Oh, no, actually, they're, they're full. My, my bad. Yeah, they're full. Yeah. They're, uh, not everyone has joined. Um, yeah. So, so some, some friends like to hang out. Hi, everyone. You're in yeah. the lobby. <laughs> um, if you want to hang out here in the main room and chat with us, uh, you can, you can welcome to do that. We might be a bit overloaded. But uh, what are your uh, 12 favorite problems? Maybe just throw that in the chat as well. Um, and then you can also do things like send a broadcast message to everyone or put your prompt into the, the, the chat. Right. Sometimes we just don't we just don't remember what the presenter said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well give uh, each other five five minutes from starting now, I guess. So I, I give them a little bit more time. Uh, so perhaps you could let them know, like, hey, I noticed that the I apparently three minutes is too short. Sorry. <laughs> First time. No, it's good. Talk about <clears throat> your 12 favorite problems and say hi to each other. Okay. Um, someone asked, Stephen, um, Stephen, have, have you been assigned? Okay, Stephen's assigned to room one. Great. Cool. Um, so, Sean, uh, you, you pasted that on the chat, right? I am broadcasting that to everyone uh, in the rooms now. Okay, great. Thank you. I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> and on the, on the breakouts, I'll just I'll put screenshots on. Okay, broadcast message to all. I see it. I see it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, usually you're I'm doing a, great, yeah, You're doing great. Yeah. Usually I Zoom one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> That's the fun. <laughs> um, for those who are here, uh, I mean, there are a fair amount of people who are still here. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share one of mine, which is something I've been collecting for a long time. Um, maybe I should share this after people come back as well, but uh, how do I ask better questions? That's, my, that's, my one, that's one of my favorite problems. It's, I've been pursuing this for a long time. There's a few books around that, right? Like The Power <laughs> of Questions. And I don't then, know uh, that. Yeah, there, there's uh, uh, Tony Robbins, in fact, talks a lot about how the quality, like he has a lot of really cool stuff on, on question asking and, and and the whole of the NLP work is on question asking and the idea that everything we think, every thought is a question. So, so if that's the question, like you can't not answer a question when you ask it. <laughs> yeah. It's that yeah. thought, it's kind of cool. That makes sense, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I, I need to, I don't even know what books there are on this topic. I've just been collecting other people's questions, essentially. <clears throat> All right. So like right now, uh, hey, Jenny, she asked if you can assign her. Um, OK. Just Should staying. I... Uh... You can get assigned, or you can ask a question now if you like to share. <laughs> Your call. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Guys, okay. I'm really sorry. I have to jump oh, off. I uh, hope I can come back. Yeah, man. Okay. Thank you. It was doing great, Sean. Thanks for coming. See you, Frank. See ya. See ya. Uh, okay, Jenny, I've assigned you to room one. Okay, cool. Or I can stay here. It <laughs> doesn't yeah. matter. You can stay here as well. Um, I think it's it's good to hear other people's 12, 12 questions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but if hmm? um, okay. Yeah, what do I what do I do <laughs> while I wait? <laughs> I... Yeah, you know, um, sometimes you can dialogue with some friends who might not yeah. have wanted to go in. Uh, All right, and, and does anyone hanging out here have um, questions on like this week's material or just want to say hi? <laughs> you can unmute yourself. Internally, and, and you you get a you get a sense of it in uh, asking people if they like breakout rooms or not, because what okay. happens. Uh, in these groups, since they are so specialized, sometimes what they want to do is just ask you questions or hear about you and not do the breakout rooms. Oh. Uh, because at this point, you, you also think about like the, the sequence. A lot of people may have gone to other sessions, so they may have already have talked about problems and the other things, oh. but they want your specialized knowledge. So they might just um. want to know like your dev background and how you manage and build your second brain or like the stuff that you share just and that time they just feel is better served for that than the breakout rooms. But you'll get a sense of your people. Uh, they, okay. Not everybody likes breakout rooms for that reason, that they don't feel they get the value. But, but if you have a big group like this, you'll probably get really good responses. But what's going to happen is 
maybe two or three people will overpower everybody and talk and not everybody will get a, a chance to share because they're, they're just bigger but they are just yeah it is they are just bigger That's okay good, um hey, this is ted smiley how are you doing hey ted I just have i'm a student and i'm trying to become a data scientist and I thought that the second brain would actually be a great tool for helping me to become, help me to grab, gap, you know, get my hands around all the information that's coming at me at one time and to be able to, in the future, be able to answer questions and help me with programming, setting things up, setting up my GitHub and other things like that. What, what are key things for a, a second brain in that area? Well, GitHub's pretty good. Um, I think a personal blog, you know, you're a developer, um, you figure out how to put, put everything on a single uh, domain and, uh, and start publishing, you know, small things that you learned. Um, I can show you, Ted, um, this guy, Josh Brashow, um, has, this, has this repo where he has um, all his TILs, like today I learned, you know, when you learn some, when you learn some new snippet of code, um, stick it somewhere, right? Um, Brand show, yeah. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share so you can see it. Um, so if you are someone who codes um, and you're going to put together a second brain, you might as well make it public and you can categorize it uh, according to like CSS, Elixir, DevOps, Python. You probably do a lot of Python or R, or whatever, um, and just put in your TILs. It doesn't have to be huge. It can just be a little code snippet like that. Um, and that makes it reusable for you, but also uh, it's extremely valuable to other people. And there's 10,000 people who've started this repo. Does that so not, don't want to interrupt you, uh, yeah. Sean. The people, it, it has been about five minutes. Okay. So if you want to. Uh, do, I, do I just click close all rooms? Don't, don't people have a are, timer? No, they don't. You, you can set a timer inside of Zoom, but not by default. Um, okay. So you can, you can actually set the rooms for five minutes, seven minutes and, and a countdown, and then they close. Yeah. In this yeah. case, when you close it, there's a minute where everybody starts shuffling back into the, the main room. Okay. I'm just going to hit close all rooms. Uh, yeah. yeah. There we go. So they have sec 60 seconds. You'll see the countdown. Kind of, uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty cool. Uh, Ted, Ted, did I answer your question? I, I hope it did. <laughs> and perhaps as people start coming back, you say, yeah, we had this interesting conversation. Give like a little as an idea right you could give like a little recap like hey here's what happened uh, and then uh, anybody want to share if you want to go down that path you can or you just ask but just a thought okay um yeah yeah man dude 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 the, what you're doing is great i think people just love seeing different approaches so there's no right way like you said right just, there's yeah. just your way <laughs> yeah exactly um okay well i'm gonna share my screen and then we can keep going <coughs> Um, so people are filing back. We've got 10 more seconds. Uh, for those who were away, I hope you had a good discussion on um, what your favorite problems are. Um, I certainly would love to, to hear them. Um, and I will be seeing them on, on the Circle Forum. So uh, we don't have to go over them more here. Uh, I just want to, you know, for those during the, during the break, I shared a little bit about um, my one of my favorite problems, which is how do I ask a better question? I think that um, you ask the poor question and you get a poor answer. And I think a lot of the systems that we have set up for ourselves today uh, are set up to give us very good answers uh, right away to the questions that we ask. But sometimes it's limited by the quality of the question. Uh, and, and if we you know, made ourselves ask better questions, then I think uh, we would have better uh, answers essentially it's a little bit like the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy when like you know uh, the aliens built earth to and to find the ultimate answer to life the universe and everything and they found the answer was 42 um, but then they were like okay but what's the question uh, to that and and so i think that's very much what i what i'm seeking to to build here um, what finding the question to life the universe and everything okay um uh, christopher horn says how do we expand our beyond our ability to ask questions, in other words, have the second brain ask the question. Wow, that is, that is deep, Christopher. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, work on it, let us know. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so I'm gonna keep going. Uh, we're still recapping a little bit about this week. Um, I've been told that actually a lot of people, a lot of you might have already done uh, mentor sessions 
during the week. And so this might be a bit redundant, uh, which makes me, which throws my plan off a little bit, <laughs> but we'll just keep going and um, we'll, we'll, we'll share a bit more. Um, and if you wanna know more about how I do stuff, uh, feel free to just throw the question in the chat as well. And I can, I can answer uh, as well. Okay, so uh, we also covered code. Uh, well, I think that a lot of the course is structured around code. Um, and this is a little bit of my, my recap for you, right? Um, and I think uh, it's very easy and it's very common for people getting into the second brain movement to start devolving into a discussion about tools. Like, oh, how do you use Notion the best? How, um, what's your setup? What's your stack if you're a developer? Um, and a lot of what Tiago does is he doesn't, he talks about workflow rather than tool. Um, for, for the developers in the room, I think it's very comparable to HashiCorp, which is this idea that um, you have, you don't try to port over everything. You just have a portable workflow. Um, pretty similar to React Native as well. If you, um, if you try to write once and run anywhere, you end up with Java. Um, if you try to learn principles once and then be able to write them anywhere, then you end up with React Native, which is a lot more portable in terms of programming paradigm. Uh, basically, uh, the tools will come and go, um, but the creative process is timeless and he's trying to teach the creative process. Uh, and so it's capture, organize, distill, and express. Uh, we're gonna write things down. And this, this week we're, we're focusing on writing things down, right? Um, uh, really just the capture habit, which I think a lot of people, uh, apart from Tiago, but also just the, a lot of the other productivity authors uh, focus a lot on. Um, then we're gonna go into organize, distill, and express. I think express is something that we're, in this group, going to focus a lot on because I want you, uh, all of you, to produce output, right? To to blog, to speak, to draw, um, produce videos, and to uh, write a book or something like that, make a make a podcast, whatever. Um, okay, <clears throat> um, I really like uh, these th this image as well. Um, that like this is a little bit of about why we do things. Um, I, I I realize now that a lot of you have already covered these concepts, so I don't need to TA this <laughs> as much as I was planning. Um, I do like I do like the the point of what to capture because it's also very tempting. And I'm an infovore, uh, just like a lot of people, like, like you are. Um, it's very tempting to capture everything. Right. Um, there's this concept of like, what if I could track every single website I've ever visited and store them somewhere? Um, and uh, well, a lot of them are crap, um, <laughs> and you you never really want to see them again. Um, so I think having a point of view on what to capture makes sense. And uh, for Tiago, is uh, is it inspiring? Is it useful? Is it surprising? Is it personal? Um, and and that lets you have some sort of filter to a first degree of. Um, what you don't capture, which is uh, things that are not useful, <laughs> not surprising, not inspiring, so on and so forth. Um, so having those rules, I think, makes makes a lot of sense. And um, but also, I think it makes you have a trigger, right? To every habit needs a trigger. Like when X happens, then Y. Um, so the moment you have the aha feeling, that's inspiring. Write it down, right? The moment you're like, I wish I knew this. That's useful. Write it down. Uh, the woman surprising, so on and so forth. Uh, especially when you're wrong, especially when you're wrong about something, um, that's that's a that's a point of opportunity to learn. Um, and if you don't learn when you're wrong, then you're going to repeat it again. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, so here, I was gonna um, did. I'm just gonna do like a show of hands. Like, okay, Zoom has like a show of hands feature. Uh, do you want to do this as a breakout room, or do you want to do this as like uh, just like a, a large group, and you want to discuss it <laughs> are, are people uh, are, are, do people have enough of uh, breakout rooms already uh, or is it better because it's more scalable large room uh, Gina says large room um, I, I literally uh, okay is there a show isn't there a show offense feature large room FOMO says large room okay people yeah have... people can go at the bottom and put a reaction yeah there's a reaction then, uh, thing the um, I should be able to see it where do I see it? Um, yeah, so if you go to the bottom, uh, people have to raise their hand up. Maybe if you yeah, ask a question, yeah. then they'll show you one. There's yeah, also so, an option yeah. of creating polls. So like, uh, do we do we have thumbs up and thumbs down? <laughs> we do, right? 
<laughs> yeah, we do. So you can do it. You can do it physically in like a camera, or you can do it with thumbs up for yeah. thumbs, thumbs up for staying one big room. Uh, thumbs down. Uh, thumbs down for like. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I'm not doing this very well. So uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there's so, so Zoom has a feature where you can actually do an emoji on your on your on your thing, and and that's what I was trying to do. Uh, but then I hadn't worked out the emoji for like the two options where both were like one was like not negative to the other <laughs> um all right yeah there, there's oh there's a poll option okay you know what let's just let's just stay in this in this room um and have someone um um speak on like does anyone have uh you know has anyone tried to capture stuff um what have you been capturing and and what what's your pain points and let's uh, let's share our experiences in this big room uh Hi, uh, I, I can quickly go. Um, awesome. So one of the one of the pain points I've seen is that uh, I've been using I've not been I've tried Obsidian and all of these other apps, uh, and I've narrowed down to a markdown based app called Note Plan. Uh, but the problem is that I find that I can switch over to Evernote, which fixes a lot of the gaps for me, and I, I am genuinely going to give it a shot. But the problem or the concern I have with Evernote is that I also have a lot of journal personal stuff that I write down, which I feel comfortable doing in a day one or a note plan kind of app, which is all being stored locally. Um, and that's where I feel like, okay, now I have two apps and now how do I bring all of these thoughts together without losing my privacy? Um, so I'm, I wanna give no, Evernote a shot, but I don't know if I will ever feel comfortable enough to get my personal thoughts, raw thoughts into Evernote. Oh yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, so I'm curious what other people do with uh, their journals versus their note taking. Uh, I have two apps. I do I do my journaling in OneNote where there's a password feature, uh, and nothing else goes in there. Um, and so even if someone, you know, pones my Notion or like I leave it unlocked and someone accesses it, they don't find my journal. <laughs> the best unit of isolation is just at the app boundary. Uh, yeah. But then do you ever do you, do you ever worry that you may have some thoughts that may eventually lead to a blog post or an article that you've been thinking about? Like those things are getting lost. Do you ever worry about that since it's not part of your quote unquote second brain? Well, I mean, it's it's not hard to run a search twice. Um, so no. Um, if you're if you're if if you're doing anything, if you're recording anything that could potentially be public in future, that should go in your your sort of publicish second brain that you wouldn't mind anyone coming across and seeing it. Um, and uh, then the journal is private and will probably never you never publish. That's that's fine. Um, but you do you do want to search on all of them in case you do need something in the future. Um, for what's uh yeah okay who, who else who else has like capture pain points or just want to talk about um, the stuff that you've been capturing? Uh, I can go, um, Sean. I, I've been thinking. What to do when there is a specific piece of information that is easily Googleable, like you can search and find it very quickly. Yeah. For developers, the usual Stack Overflow type of yeah. question. Yeah. I feel really bad when I have to research it uh, instead of in my personal uh, second brain. I have to go into Google again and get the same thing. Yeah. I was wondering uh, how you personally deal with that and if there is value in the first time you search it, you capture it. Yeah, um, that makes, this is a this is an important problem, I think. Uh, so the, uh, my, my quick answer is that the first time you, you, if you, if you capture the first time you search it, that's probably too high fidelity. Uh, it's, uh, it's gonna be very noisy and there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you only look up once and you never see again, uh, you never need again. Um, so I have this rule, which I which I call these three strikes rule for blogging, um, where it's where basically I just tell you to wait for three strikes, um, because the first time is like you just heard about this idea, the second time you're like still trying to evaluate its usefulness and you're explaining it, uh, and the third time you're like uh, it's increasing probability every single time you refer to this idea or you look it up that you're really going to need it again in future. So then, then you should start writing it and you should sh share your own authoritative link on it. Um, and even if it's a, even if it's a, um, what do you, what you call it? Like a pretty easy Googleable piece of information, you definitely have your own perspective on it. And uh, there's a, there's a, there's a nice cleanness to just Googling like your take on something 
Uh, so, so you, you know, you can use the Google thing on like site colon. This is like a Google filter, right? And it just only searches your site, right? So, so when I when I need to add Monaco editor, I just go to my source because I wrote it. Um, it explains things that would make sense to me, even though I forgot how to do any of this. Um, it would just lay it out in, in exactly the way that I would want it, um, and that's useful to someone because um, you know that's uh, people are going to find it because of you. Um, so the way I the way I phrase it for developers again is is through proxy <laughs> the top stack overflow answer if you if you if if that's a that's a that's a useful way of doing it. Um, and then the other usefulness is to have them indexed in some kind of um, central fashion, right? So uh, when I uh, need anything related to TypeScript, I go here um, and I go like, uh, hey, what is uh, a useful use case for uh, passing both props? I could Google this, but because it's all organized in the way that I see fit, um, it's useful to me and it's probably useful to others as well. Uh, so uh, marketers actually have a term for this. They call it a swipe file. So if you, you also see this uh, for design and marketing. Uh, and it's all the same concepts, right? Um, these ideas are available in, in a federated fashion um, and you'd have to look them up separately. But what if you could, oh man, does he, has he got, rid of, got rid of the landing page? Uh, oh no, where's the, where's the landing page? Um, what is, ah, God, okay, uh, good, good marketing HQ, there you go. So this is a swipe file. Um, anytime I need, something on uh, referral marketing, I can go here and I can just say, um, how did uh, Hilton Doubletree do referral marketing for word of mouth? Um, and that, that gives me an idea of how to do my, my stuff, right? So if you collect a, a swipe file of like just resources, you could look up any of these individually, but because they all, they're all in one place and they, they're all things that you've personally approved and written up, uh, you not only rem remember them better, but people can find it as well. Does that help? Um, yeah, okay, great. Um, I, I lost your. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll do we'll do we'll do a couple more. We'll, we have we have 15 minutes and actually I was I was done with my slides. So that, that was that was it in terms of like the pre prepared stuff because I wanted to make this a fairly open discussion. Um, do people uh, have other thoughts on like capturing um, I, I, I'm trying to focus it on the topic of the week, but also you can just ask me stuff about what I do for the BSB. Yeah, um, I have a question. So yeah, I like to read physical books. I'm sure there's other people here who also like like to read physical books. And the difficulty with that is that when I'm reading, like in bed, like before I go to bed, you know, I'll like highlight stuff. I'll, you know, write notes and comments on the side of the book. But then, like, what's a good time to capture that to in, into my second brain? You know, should I do it like after I finish the entire book, or should I do it like right away? But I would prefer not to like take out my phone and, you know, lose sort of like yeah. my context in the book. So I'm trying to figure out that for myself. Uh, so I have a confession, which is I don't read much physical books. Um, I, I do, I do prefer the, the PDF and the minimalism of like not having to do, decide what to do with the book after I'm done with it. Uh, what do people do? Let's, let's throw it out to the group here. Uh, what do people do for uh, physical book note taking? Uh, read wise, someone says, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't read physical books. <laughs> We're in a post paper economy. <laughs> Sean, uh, Joyce has her hand up. Joyce, uh, wh where, do I, where, do I, where do I look for Joyce? Uh, oh, I'm over here. Okay, great. Can I light up? Hey, Joyce. Uh, no, yeah. it's just like I, I'm, I'm in like the video uh, view and like it doesn't show me names. And now yeah, it shows yeah. me names. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I read physical books all the time and I have that exact problem is I'll be in a place where I'm comfortable and I'm not going to um, disturb my um, um, my train of process and I'm just marking things down and the like or using post-its. I use the review process. So if I'm doing it at night and I don't want to disturb what's going on, when I get up in the morning and I do the re I'll do a review. And they, they stay with me for, they'll stay with me for a couple days. That's how I do it. Thank you. Thanks, Joyce. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, Leslie also uh, had something to say. Hi, yes. Hi. Um, I had a question about 
basically I'm starting this for the first time. I'm very excited. I'm getting tons of tips about um, how to organize the things I'm consuming from now on. But I have so much information from <laughs> that I've already been collecting from over the years. I'm just wondering what you would recommend for organizing what we already have, if that if that makes sense. Um, what I recommend for organizing what we already have. I mean, this is the start of your capture habit, I guess. You know, I I know you're you're fresh to this and. Uh, there, there can be a lot. Um, again, rule number two: don't try to do every, capture everything, right? Um, just, do, just have a repeated process of it, and uh, look at this as an infinite game rather than a finite one. Uh, fortunately, y'all, all of you are in the the cohort where um, you have unlimited access to all future cohorts. You can come come back again whenever you want. Um, so don't feel like you have to capture it. Find something useful that you can put into practice, and then practice it, and then then keep going right like uh, you're not you're not here to capture everything because that's not your job your job is to work on yourself um and uh and so i'd say like let go you know like i i, I know the anxiety that comes with like oh i'm not getting everything and there's like 200 conversations going on in circle and mm -hmm. i'm not reading all of them don't try <laughs> just <laughs> just find the thing that you you really want to work on it which is why the whole there's this whole focus on the 12 favorite problems like find out what you're here for uh, and focus on that. And other people have uh, other agendas that they are, they're pursuing and you don't have to be in every conversation. Um, right, okay, thank you. I just, just have one follow-up um, yeah. with everything that we are capturing. Um, there's so many, so so much good advice around which types of content. I love the idea of what inspires me, what's personal to, be, to me, um, what surprises me, things like that. But um, do you have a way of turning basically what you consume into an action item? Ooh, do I have a way of turning what I consume into an action item? So for me, my action item is blogging, right? That, that, that is the, the way I express myself. Uh, and is what, other... sorry? Blogging, blogging. Like th that's, oh, right. that's, the way, that's the way I could produce public output. Uh, there are other forms, uh, tweeting, videos, talks, um, but they all secondary to blogging because I, I think that's the most scalable form of human output. Um, so I have a list, uh, you, I, I can show you. Uh, it's really like, I, I know that uh, y'all want it to be perfect. Um, and I think there are some consultants out there who like really impose a lot of imposter syndrome. I'm here to show you the negative example of like how imperfect it can be and still work. Um, this is the way I blog. Um, so <laughs> uh, this is how I compile my newsletter every week. Um, it's just like, <laughs> I want to talk about this in my newsletter and I just throw the link there. Uh, these are my blog post ideas, uh, I, and I draft it in, in here in simple note. Um, very cool. Very very minimal, um, not very structured. Um, I do have knowledge bases, right? So <clears throat> um, I think Frank in the comments, Leslie, was, was, was saying like next week we'll actually learn about how to organize stuff. So we're not even at the organized stage yet, right? We're at the, the capture stage. This is, this is the capture week where we, you, you're just training on ha having the habit, the trigger and the action. The trigger is, is it surprising? Is it interesting? Is it um, what, what were the other two? Uh, per personal and I forget the other one. <laughs> but um, you know, if is it is it noteworthy to you? Um, then make sure to write it down uh, to the point of like I will when I come across something interesting, I will pause what I'm doing and not take in any other information until I have captured it, because there's no point to absorbing more information and forgetting it all, right? Um, so yeah, it's really about getting over that mindset of having to capture everything, uh, because we're no longer talking about you know, drinking from that fire hose. We're, 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 we're having a point of view uh, and we're trying to collect things. Um, okay, so yeah, so the, this, is, this is the way I, uh, you know, the, the, the second brain people have been giving us some help in terms of like how to mentor. Um, so I've been capturing resources just kind of like that in, in, in Notion. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and for me, it doesn't exist. It's not real until I blog about it. So I do want, I do have an intent. I, I think capturing without an intent can be a bit, um, uh, I can feel a bit lost. Like what, what, what's my real goal here? Um, and having an intent of like, this is the blog post that I'm going to write, which is um, what's the difference between a mentor, coach, teacher, and facilitator. It's just literally word for word, exactly what they taught us, but I didn't really know this. And I think it's useful for other people. So I'm going to write, I'm going to write it up uh, and I'm going to live through it and, and uh, add some personal experience. 
and that will be it. Um, having a having a goal of like I'm capturing this to do something um, is is more helpful to me than just just pure capturing everything and never doing anything with it. Amazing. Thank you so much. And and I do think I jumped the gun a bit, but with um, trying to learn what we're going to be learning next week. But thank you so much. That was it's really a, helpful. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Like. Uh, well, first of all, you can jump ahead if you want. Uh, it's, all, <laughs> it's all it's all available there. Um, but yeah, take it slow. You're, you're uh, you got a long long road ahead of you. Like you know, if if this if you do this right, you're doing this for it's, you know hopefully the rest of your life. So um, yeah, you don't have to do it perfect. Do it. <laughs> Just do it often. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, Who's got next? So Tom has his hand up, and but one one question or one idea, some some of the attendees may have come to know or ask questions around Notion, so or perhaps to get more of your perspective around Notion. Yeah, Let's could there that. be any questions perhaps that people ask that they have around Notion or just that topic? If we can focus them on that at least for a little bit of the the session yeah. here. Yeah, we have we have the room until like for another seven minutes, and then I can go another thirty on like personal questions. Uh, so let's take some Notion questions now, and then uh, those people who are just here for that can can uh, can go, and the rest can stay on and on or whatever. Uh, who's got Notion questions? Um, Gina says, "Can you give an overview of your capture and processing of info in Notion?" Uh, thanks, Gina. <laughs> Also, Amit says, how do you decide what goes in simple note versus notion? I like this question a lot. Uh, I think Amit, you you were talking about the local first idea. Uh, I don't care about local first uh, because I don't, I'm not yes. that privacy focused. Uh, as long as it's yeah. behind a password lock, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. So one note is my secure journaling thing uh, and it doesn't intersect with anything else that I do. Uh, simple note is cross-platform and faster than notion is. Um, so this is simple note uh, and it is simple, it's simple. It, it really is, it, it's almost too simple and that's how you want it to be, right? You, you want to not give yourself choice of like, should I bold this? Should I make this red? Should I make this italics? Screw all that, just like write stuff down and, and don't screw it up. Don't, don't, get any, don't let anything get in the way of that. Um, and that, that's, that's what sticks for me. Um, other people, uh, they have beautiful notions uh, and, and, and it really sparks the creative joy for them. So please don't let my, the way I do things, um, uh, affect you too much, uh, but that's that's how I do it. Um, so simple simple note just has raw material. Um, Notion has my startup focus. You know, I I, I do uh, I I am a head of department in a startup, um, so I do I do uh, concentrate on collecting a lot of uh, uh, focus areas on 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 all these topics. Um, a lot of these are just in case, <clears throat> meaning that um, uh, I need I essentially use Notion as a buffer between the stuff that comes in serendipitously and when I need them. Uh, because often those times do not match up. Um, but what does help is, for example, uh, when I need um, some advice on cold emailing, these are the things that I have personally approved for myself uh, that I can just go uh, go through and, and cold email. Um, I do my in my own community. This is gonna this is gonna look super overwhelming to you, so please don't uh, don't feel like you have to do this. Uh, but you know. Part of my part of my book is that I run a community uh, where I do resources like this. So, um, uh, in fact, the the cold email resources uh, have been I've been working on for for a while as well. So I will come here um, and add them and write them up uh, as as I go over time. So uh, that's that's part of how I think about Notion. Um, I do definitely uh, try to publish some of these. So when I worked at AWS, um, I actually curated this as a service to my community. Uh, as I learned about AWS myself. Um, and that's it. I mean, you know, you can learn a lot about AWS just kind of going through going through these resources and, and that's great. Um, then for me, I have a scratch pad in Notion where uh, these are the, the ways in which I draft blog posts. So here, this is a talk that I did. Um, so I literally just structured the talk and then, and then turned it into um, a 30 minute talk for React Summit. This is a blog post that I just sent out yesterday to my newsletter. Um, and I, it's all drafted in Notion, um, and people can leave comments if they want. Um, actually, I, I realized that if you want to send a, send a public blog post, do it in Google Docs, because more people have, uh, it's, it's a, just a better commenting feature in Google Docs, and most people are logged in already. Um, but yeah, uh, that's how I decide between simple, no simple notes and Notion. Sean, Peter, can you walk us through your, your capture thinking? 
and uh, specifically a notion like your workflow and if after doing that if you can maybe show how you capture podcast notes because there's oh yeah 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 questions around that <laughs> it's really maybe walk us, yeah if you can walk us through the thinking i think a lot of people want to know like how you got to what you just showed us but maybe the process that got you there um, the thinking is just like, is this an, it just, is this the thing I want to blog about, right? Like, so for, for me, having a, an intent to my capturing is very important. Um, so, um, it, you know, what's the blog title and then like attach all the discussion points and the relevant links to that, to that title. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is it. I mean, <clears throat> um, when I, um, I, so I have, I have, a I have, a another, resource again it's all it makes sense in my head uh, I, I am more of a messy person um, so so I'm not as minimalist as some other uh, folks who who do really well on YouTube um, but, <laughs> but it works for me is there a chance you could show us like how you're using maybe the capture tool in notion or how you get this into your notion environment like, oh okay 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 um I don't for the mechanics right? or the, the setup demo yeah how, how how did you end up with this is what maybe some of us want to know um like these are uh this is essentially a project right um and then these are these are resources uh so it's so it's kind of loose power um and then the, the 12 the 12 favorite questions um and then um it, it's it's very loose power and then and then i have uh personal finance stuff i have uh, and then and then a scratch pad for myself i don't use the notion capture tool uh, mainly because um it's too broad for me um um like either either I get the point of the article or or I haven't read it at all, um, and if I got the point of the article, I can summarize it for myself, um, and that summary is way more useful. So, uh, I think this I think this is covered in one of the weeks. I'm not sure which which week, but he has a few levels of progressive summarization. Um, um, so I, I tend to just skip the first level of like, uh, yeah, there's a, right. So Tiago, this is this is one of the the things. Do we do we cover it this week? I don't actually remember. Um, no, that's coming up. That's like in week three. So okay. right. maybe not. Yeah. Right. So, so <laughs> yeah, first of all, when you first come across something, uh, you have like raw notes, then you bold passages and you highlight passages and mini summary and remix. Uh, I basically go either, either I'm at layer one or zero, and then I go straight to layer like four. Um, I, I like the other stuff is too intermediate for me that, so I, I don't really do that. <laughs> um, and the mini summary, like I can, I can go down the 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 summarization stack um, if I if I need more, and uh, quite often I do. But all the links to the resources are, are already there. So um, to me, that that is that is the amount of work that I want to do for my for my note taking. And uh, probably I could do better at that, but uh, that's what I do right now. Yeah. Okay. Did I answer? I feel like I, I lost some questions. Um, how do I capture post, podcast notes to Notion? I do not. So uh, podcast notes go here. Um, and they're literally like the, the clips, the five minute clips that I want to highlight and, and model upon. Um, and that uh, every day, one, once a day, I do, I do I, I clip that and produce it. Um, so this is, I've been doing this for probably a hundred ish days now. Uh, and these are all just clips of like, hey, I, I really like this interview. Uh, this is an origin story of, of uh, someone of a CEO, which I thought was really inspiring. And I played it. Um, sorry, I should, I should pause that. Um, but that's, that's about it as far as podcast notes go. Um, I think, uh, you know, if they relate to a particular topic that I'm interested in, like uh, for me, hiring, I do a lot of... Um, Um, literally, this is the link to the podcast, and I took notes on that podcast. Um, and that's about what I, that's where I leave it, um, because then this will go into my own company's hiring docs um, as, as an input. But um, podcast notes, like that's, those, those are the two dimensions in which, I, in which I have them. So personal notes, if they're focused on a topic, uh, but this makes this in together with text notes. And for specific podcast stuff that I want to share with other people and just say like, hey, um, I really like this uh, Andrew Wilkinson story on his his first job that was really crappy. Um, I'm going to clip it um, and then make it shareable with other people. Um, and and eventually over time, I'll just have this resource of like everything that I found interesting, and people can go through that. Find, they find a lot of value from it. Um, and then, but 
again, it's it's a, it's an example of a potentially multiplayer game that I win as a single player game just because um, I just have a record of everything that I've listened to. Cool. So you're at the top of the hour in case anybody. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I hope this session was useful. It's my first time doing this, uh, but we'll we'll get better over time. And I'm definitely going to drop in on other mentor sessions to see how they do stuff. Um, but yeah, um, you can email me uh, if, if you want comfortable asking questions uh, here. You can email me. Um, I'm at six at six .io. So I guess at six. Uh, six uh, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some coming, comments coming in saying that it was a great idea of clipping. Yeah. But thank you yeah. for that. So I do. So I do a lot of interviews. Um, is part of the nature of my job. This is my email address, by the way. If anyone anyone here can email me questions, uh, I'll, I'll take them async. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of interviews. Um, and so what I what I do is actually, uh, <laughs> and this is my finance side showing. I rehypothecate my <laughs> my uh, my uh, my interviews. So uh, so every weekday I do five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, and then every weekend I'll drop a, a longer form uh, chat. So people who follow me uh, can just literally catch up on on everything that I've been doing uh, outside of uh, my own my own personal output. So I like this idea of like going onto other people's channels, other people's YouTube's and podcasts, and be a, being a guest. So people hear about you, uh, and you get to you get a nice energy to bounce off of to create content, and then bring that all into your own site, um, so that you have one central place for people to discover you and, and go deep on your on your stuff. Um, so that's what I do. Yeah, for, for people people um, asking about how I clip, I uh, use Audacity. Um, it's a free open source app. Um, has a little bit of a learning curve, but there are any number of tutorials on YouTube to, to learn how to do it. Uh, and literally, I'll go something like this, um, and then I'll move stuff around. Um, actually, I did this in my uh, audition for uh, the BASB mentorship. But literally, I'll just be like, play this. OK, this is cool. Clip that, clip that, and then. Uh, move it around here like you learn all the shortcuts really quickly and, and you can make a it doesn't take that much effort um, and it's a really nice productive experience for me because um, um, it's a small win that I can knock out every day no matter how bad my day is I know I can do this I have a huge backlog of interesting content um, and I, when I revisit the content I learn it over again um, and I can knock it out in 30 minutes and that's that's a win for me um, so I, I like this. I like having a keystone habit, essentially, as a, as a creator. Um, no matter how stuck I am on blogging, no matter how how uh, how bad my my day at work has been, um, I can do this, and I can call it a win. And it's it's something that's mine. Uh, I think yes, you Panda. Sorry, but Sergio had a question. I'm not sure if he still does. Uh, I don't. I didn't see it. Yes, I had a question because I lowered a hand. Few seconds ago. Oh, uh, one more question is regarding to the notes in Notion and but while I'm already check how do you capture all the notes. But uh, my, my main question is related to how Notion or what is the best technique or the best tool to grab uh, notes on the way, you know, because for example, something that happens to me, it's I'm driving and sometimes an idea came to my mind related to some code. I'm, I'm a developer, so also so uh, and uh, and then I get another idea, but uh, if I don't write down at that moment, mm. then I forgot. And sometimes I forgot uh, forgot that, that idea and, and just I miss a chance to solve a, a big problem, you know? Uh, so, but uh, <laughs> but doing that, it's a kind of a, a buggy because, you know, it's not too easy to just go with my mobile, open it, open Notion, and I'm putting in there. I'm gonna start using uh, draft apps because he has something cool in the watch. But just I'm wondering if exists any other technique or tool or something to only uh, capture uh, 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 capture notes quickly on the way. So it's draft apps, the one that I am using as well. Is it this one that I have on screen? Is it drafts? Get drafts. Up. Drafts, yeah, drafts apps. Yeah, I think so. That yeah. Yeah. Uh, so first nice. of all, someone someone in the chat said, uh, "Don't know shit and drive." Uh, I endorse that. Don't don't know shit and drive. Oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> Um, so thanks, Benjamin, for that. Uh, it's true. Um, drive safe. Uh, I've, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah. Um, hey, Sean, can I answer this question? Yeah, yeah please. Because I just, and I'm pretty excited about this. I just, uh, I had a session on Friday and Tammy, one of a, another fellow BASB, mentioned uh, Notion actually has widgets. So I just installed the widget earlier today so I could share what that looks like. 
because I'm still experimenting, if it's okay. Um, so I think I'm gonna stop sharing what you're sharing. But there, this could be really useful for what you were just asking about, Sergio. And I'm gonna put this awesome. here so you see it. So this is my phone that I just found a way of showing it. And what you'll see here is the whole idea of, a, of, a, of an inbox, or you could have your favorites widget and inside of the widget, you could easily click it on the plus. And what that do is that'll put it in the top. Okay. You, you can add a new private page at the bottom. So that's one way that you can address that. The other thing is the fast, quick ad, like what you're saying, you're on the go. Let's say you have your, your inbox, and I'm going to minimize this. You could easily create a new page in here, and then you have the ability to add it. So the, the thing that was slowing us down with Notion was the quick add using widgets and customizing this to what you need is definitely going to improve your, your workflow, right? I mean, it's easy as just putting a little plus sign and then just doing different stuff in here, right? So it's just, it's really something that I'm playing around with, but this is solving that one issue that I've just been struggling with in a lot of us, which is how can we get information fast inside of uh, Notion without um, as fast as maybe some of these other tools that we're using. So yeah, I definitely recommend exploring that because that might improve your flow. And like, uh, I'm not sure if, if you saw it here, but um, let me share it again. Inside of the, let's see, so I'm sharing my phone. It's scary, right, Shane? Because I didn't curate any of this stuff. But uh, what you'll see at the bottom right corner, there's that little plus thingy. So if I, it's in two clicks, I can easily come in here and start adding. And one of the things you can do is, I mean, type to, hey, uh, this is, these are some of the ideas that I'm capturing right now, blah, 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 blah. If, you don't, if you're on the go and you can't really write right now, but you can speak it, I mean, you see the power here, now you can start integrating many of these other things that you're talking about and go. So you're using your phone. It also works for Android, I checked that right now. But uh, yeah, here's a note, period. Next line, new line, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, just something for you to consider. Oh, that's perfect. I, I, I will try the widget thing because I was using only the widget uh, the, the single icon and just is like an uh, direct access. But the other one with the plus sign, this is the kind of the thing that I am looking for. And, okay. and this is perfect for that. Thank you so much, Frank. Gracias. And that someone should blog about it. <laughs> always, always turn it into output, right? Um, yeah. Every time, every time you have some some TIL, um, that is something that you learned, and I, I learned that too. I, I didn't I didn't know about this, so this is great. Um, yeah, but I I personally use Simple Note just because uh, I find it a bit faster. Um, I, I've been very like I'm very performance oriented, and uh, any latency in Notion just really takes me off. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, well, just something to, to share with everyone. And this my, my core flow is with the draft apps in in iOS. I this there is have the up for the watch. And so just I am moving here and I start just triggering the notes, just I, uh, I speak it to there. And then when I get in my home, just I dedicate a certain amount of time to, to copy and paste the notes inside of Notion. But well, I think so with that one that Frank shows will be a better flow. Thank you so much, Sean. Yeah, uh, Frank, do you know if it's available on Android? Uh, Amit was asking. It is, I'll put, I'll put a link in right now for both of them. Uh, Cause I just saw, I just literally sent this, actually not like, an hour or so before the call started. So that's, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm also pretty excited about testing automation with Notion. I know that's been one of those things that a lot of us have been looking for, but it's it's there as a workaround, not not out of the box and not, um, but yeah, here's, here's a, a, the Twitter link, I think for the widget feature. What I was surprised to know is like, I think I'm the Notion guy, right? But this came out in November of last year. It's like, where was this? Like, how come I, but in the call Friday, again, another student mentioned it. And I was like, sweet, because that's what these sessions do. They just bring up a bunch of stuff that we just didn't see. But yeah. And I'll put the, the Notion um, widget. There was a, a Notion VIP guy, William Nutt. He wrote about it. Um, and I think he did a really good kind of little um, explanation there. So I'll put that. Yeah. Bottom line is the capture habit is super important. And yes, I've had those ideas that come in and then I like, 10 seconds later, I'll, I'll, I'll like lose it. And it, it was, it, it would have been like a big unlock for me at work or uh, some big insight. And I just totally like, it just, it's just gone. Um, so I'll literally like, if I, if I hear something, if I have a thought in my head while I'm showering, I'll just like 
jump out of the shower dripping wet and go write it down. Uh, that's that's the, that's how seriously I take this caption capture thing. Um, so I, I I highly recommend like yeah if you're driving stop driving write it down keep driving, um, but like it, it really that is important to to capture stuff because uh, you, you will lose it. Have an Alexa in your bathroom. Yes, that's uh, uh, if I were not uh, in COVID, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a lot of control over my living situation right now. <laughs> but yes, uh, I, I think so. Uh, I so when I was an Alexa developer, I, I tried to basically make an Alexa notes app, and then the the API didn't let you record uh, any amount of length of detail. Maybe they've opened it up since, uh, but it'd be nice to capture notes through through Alexa. I don't think they. Uh, allow you to do it very long. Um, so I wanted to like, like, could you record a podcast through Alexa? Um, and I think there's a limit of like 30 seconds. Um, cool. All right, who's got, who's got general, uh, we're, we're, we're out of the, the limited time. We've got 17 minutes left before we have to piece. Um, but uh, who's got like general note-taking developer -y questions? This is very, this is more like the, the niche crowd. Uh, Frank, if you, wanna, if you wanna jump off, I know, I know you've been like on this all day. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just ask I'll just be available for people who who know my work and just want to ask me about stuff. Uh, Glenn, oh, Arif, oh, Glenn, go ahead. Um, well, my question is mainly around the uh, struggle with um, expression, like actually putting the things out there and having more of a engineering or technical mindset. Yeah. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm now using a bear as a note-taking app, like, so I mainly write a markdown, but then every time I use it, I'm getting a little bit of this content that I can't use certain key bindings that I'm used to using programming. So then I think I should look into researching, like how do I use an, another, system um so then the same with producing like blog posts or something like then I'm, I'm creating a static site and i'm setting up all these things and then whenever i just try to do one thing it brings up 10 more questions like research questions like should i and then i fall a bit in the trap of not actually putting something out there the same with a certain topic or blog post like it brings up so many sub questions so something to mitigates more i guess the feelings of like there is a way i want to do it and there is a lot of things uh yeah if that makes sense in some way so yak shaving is real and it's not just <laughs> for and i think developers are very aware of of that uh you have you essentially have a bunch of dependencies that uh you're not super happy with but uh you got to get stuff out um if it's if you if you don't produce then it never existed right like it's it's almost like getting 90 percent of the way there is almost like zero percent if from the outside world um so i i definitely think that if having tools that you you enjoy um is important because that that's an input to your writing um and if you start having any friction at all then uh, you, you're not going to enjoy the process of writing so um you got to keep looking for tools to keep trying all, all of them um what's great in, in bsb is essentially that you have a community that has tried out every tool out there um so just go into the forums and look for like what other tools uh, exist that's uh, partially your issue is why i like simple note um i actually have also tried to code my own cms uh using vs code um that's why i uh I had that blog post about Monaco because I use Monaco to write my own CMS, uh, and I, I miss I miss a lot of the the niceties in in CM, in, uh, in VS Code. Uh, but ultimately, when you find something that's good enough, it's not going to be perfect, uh, and then you ship, um, and you start to you have to figure out where you draw the line on uh, what is a deal breaker for you. Like I cannot keep writing unless unless I have this, and everything else just you know be okay with it, <laughs> be okay with the imperfection. Because it's good enough for a lot of other people. <laughs> Sorry, Glenn. I, I don't. I don't know if that's the answer that you're looking for. But <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Amit Monaco is the core uh, library behind VS Code. Uh, it is the editor tooling that is written in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. 
Glenn, if you have any follow-ups, uh, let us know in the, in the, in the comments. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead to Arib. I think Arib, you had next, and then uh, Yanni, I think you're next. Hey, um, thanks for the session so far. Um, I know you mentioned that uh, you're not maybe that interested in local first, and uh, that's fine. But uh, just curious if you or Frank or anyone uh, like from BSB, now that have been through so many cohorts, have any kind of guidance. So my problem is basically um, around security and privacy because my employer has strict like requirements. So I can't really just send stuff to the cloud. And then, so I was torn. And that's the reason I took the course to try to figure out a solution is I could either have a kind of a set of apps for my second brain for my personal stuff, which I'm okay with sending some of it or most of it to the cloud. And then I have another one, you know, for my prof my employer and then trying to break, break the gap, right? So there's some overlap. And so like, for example, like some example could be like, you know, if I figure out very simple example, like how to provision a VM in AWS, you know, I could write out all the notes for my employers kind of in my, those notes, but there's a lot of stuff I could just take, which is just general stuff, right? It's just, uh, but then I, now I don't have dry because if I copy paste it and all this, because I'm repeating myself, right? So sorry, a bit long winded, but I wanted to give you some context. So, so what's the question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you have any guidance for like a local first second brain yeah. with um, also kind of having workflows for separating personal and employee stuff? So I could, you know, take my personal stuff with me. Yeah, I got you. Um, so Glenn has a bunch of answers actually in, in the chat. Um, so there is a circle and a meeting around using Emacs org mode. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about org mode actually. Uh, you might want to check that out. Um, I would also check out Foam, um, which is the uh, VS Code um, version of Roam, uh, like the Roam tools, the, the, the thing with the app with the, the backlinking. Um, Obsidian also supports Markdown. Obsidian is local first. There's a bunch of these that are local first. Uh, absolutely, you you have your, your pick of choice uh, tools for these. Um, yeah, a lot of people using Obsidian. I'm actually, I'm, I'm interested by Obsidian, but for me, cross-platform is very important. Like I'm, I'm on my phone as much as I am on my desktop. So uh, I cannot have my tools uh, be separate for the, those things. They, they need to be the same thing. I know, I know, I know. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, what's the other... I think that was it. I mean, uh, yeah, it looks like Glenn's, Glenn's really up in this. So talk to Glenn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, also like if there's working examples, but yeah, I'll follow oh, yeah, up yeah. on the messages in the chat because uh, there's, you know, task management, note, note management is just like one part of it. Like, you know, there's no read wise local first, for example, right? So you got to figure out like all those parts of the flow chart, right? I got you. But I, I, that's where I am right now. So, but yeah, well, I'll, I'll follow up with the chat and yeah, well, one more cool. feedback is like dry, like encoding is also overrated, right? Like there's, I think there's a movement against dry. Uh, it's fine to repeat yourself, especially if you're repeating yourself a maximum of twice. Like who cares? Like just copy and paste, it's it's fine, it's cheap. Um, and also I think be be aware that uh, to me, I, I view my work notes as a, as a thin outer layer around my own thick set of personal notes. Cause that one will, will, will last with me for life. Whereas the work one is just wherever I'm currently working uh, and that will go away. And so you want to minimize that to just projects that you're specifically working on for work. Yeah. And that's kind of going back to like how you're expressing and you showed like your notion, like yeah, that's all personal and all, all that stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, all personal. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. cool. Uh, Thank you. Let's uh, head to Yanni. Hi, Shan. First of all, hey. thanks for your time for investing in power growth. Um, oh, my question this. is more around more like a general one. So it might be a little bit uh, related to Para. I haven't watched it yet, but after you capture all this amazing information, I'm curious how you do quote, quote, how you do the triage process. So starting like from when you do it to what you do, especially with the mindset of productionizing this content. My hypothesis, my assumption here um, is that probably depending on which phase you are in, um, in terms of productionizing your content, maybe your triage process might be different. So I'm just curious, after you capture all those things, how do you, yeah, how do you just triage things to put, okay, this is going to that, I might be used for the, this future blog, I might be used this for the current blog. I wonder how this whole year uh, uh, process looks like. Does this question okay. make sense? Yeah. Um, you need, you can't have too many just in case uh, items, essentially. Like it's very easy to try to collect everything and just like, I might need this one day. Um, and, and then just add them with like an unmanageable, unmanageable pile of stuff. 
um, this is why it's important to have those 12 favorite problems. Or to me, uh, those, those could equivalently be the 12 blog posts that I'm currently working on. Um, and then see. you're slotting information there. Anything that doesn't fit, um, either you have to let it go. Uh, pretend you never even came across it at all. Um, mm. And, and uh, you need some filter. You, you cannot, you, you just, you, you cannot try to capture everything. Like, don't try. Um, so like, is it currently relevant to a project they're working on or not? Um, if it's not, uh, is it worth starting a new project over uh, compared to all the other things that you're currently working on? If you've got too much going on, you got to drop it. You got you to let it go. <laughs> I think that's honestly a great answer. Yeah, that makes sense. I think probably I was thinking more like capturing. Yeah, because you can basically the solution, not a solution, but the approach you are taking here is you have a set of a project that you're currently working on and you are mm -hmm. capturing the information that maps to it. Um, and then you keep evolving around it. Once the project is gone, you, you might add on one more and they capture another information from the different yeah. lenses. Yeah, and it's not just projects. Uh, para is, uh, you know, projects, uh, areas, resources, and you can you can accumulate any number of resources as well. Um, so- I see. Uh, yeah, so for me, like, but, but the more you are able to limit it, the more, the deeper you can go rather than broad. Um, and, and, and to me, that, that is uh, more rewarding because it's, it's too easy to, to just spread out over everything and try to be interested in everything. That um, totally makes sense. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, one uh, IP, or IP, or <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce your, someone had their hand up um, and it was uh, not that. Okay, well, um, if you had your hand up earlier, because I, I think there was, there was there were two people. Yeah. Like, uh, Oh. You just said it. Oh, I'm sorry, my mute was on. Uh, okay. Lovely session, learned loads. I have a quick question regarding research. I've, uh, like, since I uh, collect a lot of information, so what I've uh, faced is uh, I've collected the information and I've uh, saved it someplace. So when I want to do, uh, like, make a blog on it or write a report on it, I feel that since some time has passed, so that research might be outdated so i go back to google do the research once again so the the process of collecting it saving it becomes redundant after a certain for a period of time for me uh, what should be the thought process or the mind shift i can change regarding that i would like your opinion okay feedback. stuff stuff becomes outdated you said when you when you collect yeah. notes uh, no like suppose i'm researching on a particular topic which i want to uh, make my notes on uh, suppose uh, six months have passed i feel like in six months it, there would have been more research conducted on that particular topic so i go back to google research again and collect more information so it's like a continuous cycle yeah um that makes sense i think that's pretty normal <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty normal right yeah. <laughs> okay awesome Awesome. I, I do like I do like uh, building reusable resources, right? Like so, yeah. um, the the reaction text which cheat sheet that I showed you, if it's outdated, just delete it. Um, it's it's okay. in the history somewhere if you need it. But um, uh, having a materialized view of uh, everything that's currently relevant, uh, that's well organized yeah. for someone coming across it for the first time, uh, is yeah. extremely valuable. People don't do that. People always do uh, logs of like, uh, here's what I came across today. Here's what I learned today. That's useful, but it's not structured. And structure is almost as important as content. Awesome, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, cool. Uh, we've got we've got time for one last question. Um, but I mean, maybe maybe someone else wants to you know share their process or like something they learned from this week that they, that they just like really want to talk about. And like this is the space, man. <laughs> uh, Greg, you, you had your hand up. Yeah, something that I just learned from you, and it was fantastic. Thanks a bunch. I mean, th th this is great, but you mentioned with, with regards to tools to define your deal breakers. And I mean, just new to this, I've been, you know, distracted by so many different shiny, bright object tools. You know, for me, I think that's extremely powerful just to define your deal breakers. Like, you know, you talked about how cross-platform is important and things like that. Well, that's going to immediately eliminate certain tools. Um, so, uh, yeah. Defining deal breakers was a big help. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I think something that Tim Ferriss is famous for. I don't know if he came up with this, but um, it's a it's a definitely powerful concept, which is making one decision that uh, eliminates a hundred other decisions. Right. So if you individual, if you evaluated each tool uh, from a from scratch, um, then you would not really. Uh, it would take a lot of time. 
Um, but if you had like an understanding of like your own needs and understanding uh, deal breakers, then you can rule out entire categories. Um, and, and so I really like these, but also try not to have too many deal breakers, right? Because it's possible to be too picky and deal break yourself out of every tool in existence. Um, that's when you know you've gone too far. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, but similar, uh, and this is, I think, something that um, it's hard because um, high expectations people, like, uh, you know, the, the, there's this quote about the unreasonable man, like uh, the, reasonable, re the reasonable man that conforms, fits himself to what the world expects of him, and the unreasonable man reshapes the world to his expectations, um, something like that. I'm, I'm butchering this quote. Um, so if you are unreasonable and you find yourself actually deal breaking out of every single tool in existence, um, you might be the right person to, to make that tool. Um, but for, for most of us in most areas of our lives, we should be <laughs> fairly reasonable and, and, uh, try, and try to limit our, our, uh, uh, our pickiness. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I say. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, part of, you know, I, the, the essay I have on this, I think it's on my blog. Uh, it's called um, uh, Good Enough is Better Than Best. Um, stop looking for the best, because uh, being the best is very very external focus. You'd have to evaluate all tools. You have to keep up on all news. You have to think about what other people think. Uh, whereas good enough is very self focused. Um, it's what it's about what you need, what you know, uh, and um, and and it's just like yeah, it, it's a it's a very it's a very nice shift because. Um, then it's, then it's more of like a satisfying rather than a maximizing mentality. Uh, and, and I think that's that's a more sustainable way to, to live life, to be honest. Like there, there's just so much FOMO out there, so much like anxiety of, over like, I, did I make the right choice here? Um, yeah, uh, I think the more you, you let go, uh, you're, the happier you'll be. And I think I think we, we, we need to, you know, make, make room for happiness in our, in our collect capturing. Like we need to enjoy this, essentially. We're not taking on a second job to like try to, prove that we're better than anyone else. This is for us. There you go. That's the George Bernard Shaw quote. Um, OK, yeah, I, I think that's it for, uh, for our uh, one and a half hours together. Um, we'll try to do this every week, and I'm going to try to get better. And um, yeah, thanks, thanks so much for your time. And we can continue this on Circle or on email, however you prefer. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Bye -bye. This is great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. It was awesome.